Let's look at a mink dissection. Our species is Neogalli vison. Our specimens are farmed, so come to us lacking their fur, in addition to their front and rear paws. Let's start with external features. Here we have the nose and the eye of the specimen. Because they are skinned, you can more readily see the tongue and the teeth of the specimen. Here is the ear. And moving back, we first encounter the front leg of the specimen. You can see where its front paw would have been. As we continue down the animal, we reach its hind leg, and you can see where its hind paw would have been. The mink's tail is still intact. To distinguish between the sexes, we also look for external features. We'll start by looking at a male. Here we have its penis, behind which sit its testes. Although not visible here, the anus does sit behind these testes. For the female, we need to move some structures out of the way. Once the tissue has been moved, you can see the vulva and the opening to the vaginal canal. Now to see the interior features, you need to make a series of incisions. Start by making cuts near the hind legs of the animal, then make a cut up through the abdominal cavity and cuts by the rib cage to open that abdominal cavity then cut through the ribs to open the thoracic cavity. Here we can see the thoracic cavity. We have an atrium and the ventricles of the heart. You can see the pericardium, which was opened to reveal the structures of the heart. We have the lobes of the lungs that sit to either side of the heart. Beneath that is the diaphragm right here that separates the thoracic from abdominal cavities. You can also see the lobes of the liver. Here's the greater omentum that covers the small intestines, and you can see the small intestines. These take up a great portion of the abdominal cavity. Here's the urinary bladder, and moving the small intestines out of the way, you can see the large intestine and the colon. Now to see the features beneath, we need to move those small intestines out of the way. Once those intestines have been moved, you can more clearly see features of the urogenital system. Here we have one kidney and another kidney that are both embedded in the body wall. Our specimen here is a female. Here you can see the ovary and the oviduct. There is another oviduct connected to another ovary on the other side of this animal. Once you move the urinary bladder out of the way, you can see the uterine horns and the uterus of this specimen. We can also take a closer look at the thoracic cavity. Here we have those lobes of the lungs. Moving those out of the way, you can see the superior vena cava and the pulmonary trunk. You can also see the heart situated in its pericardium in that thoracic cavity, and both atria are very visible from this view. You can also see the inferior vena cava, which is more visible once those lobes of the lungs are moved. From another view, top down, you can also see that superior vena cava once more, and moving those lobes of the lungs out of the way, you more clearly see the inferior vena cava right here. From this view, you can also see both atria very clearly and both ventricles. That pericardium again has been opened to reveal these structures of the heart. We have the diaphragm, which separates the thoracic and abdominal cavities. We have the lobes of the liver. And in this specimen, the greater omentum is quite extensive. You must move that greater omentum out of the way to reveal the small intestines underneath. So there are the small intestines. Moving those, you can see the urinary bladder right here and the large intestine and the colon right here. In this specimen, we have the liver 
And right now we're looking at the stomach. So you have to move tissue to be able to see that stomach clearly. Looking at some vasculature, we have those kidneys embedded in the body wall and a very nice caudal vena cava with renal veins going off to support the kidneys.